have a hard stop today, uh, right, Rishi? Yes. So should we get started? Yep. Even though folks are flowing in? Okay, today is one of my most favorite classes. And, and today also is a class where, for the last time, everybody chills. And what does that mean? Chills meaning it's easy, it's, uh, you know, it's all about a natural instinct, it's about common sense, it's about what you already know, because guess what? All of you are leaders, right? And so today is easy peasy, but starting next week is where it starts to get challenging. Challenging because that's when we start what we call meats and potatoes. Meats and potatoes is how do we now drum up a business? How do we now take what we have as our idea and create a business? And to do that, you have to start thinking about one fundamental thing, which is business plan, business plan. So next week onwards, we'll start teaching you that. But today, we'll have fun. Not that we won't have fun next week, but today we'll have fun with more common sense stuff. Right? So, uh, recapping last week, everybody. Recapping, remember the three keywords? There were three keywords we discussed last week. I see a hand up. Keyword? Creativity. Creativity, yes. Keyword? Passion. Passion. And then one more. Anybody, show of hands. Shout out. Jugad, yes. We talked about Jugad, yes. That's a good one. But there's one more thing. Remember the connector. The connector. Remember the connector last week. You have passion. And you convert your passion using your creativity. But then, if, you, if you're trying to just do it for the heck of it, what happens? I mean, you don't get anywhere. But if there is something... I'll come to you. If there is something, you can take your passion and your creativity and solve that, and that's when big things are born. So what's the third keyword? Perseverance is a quantity we'll talk about today. But what are we trying to solve? You've answered. Problems. Problems. So you have a problem to solve. There's a problem in the world. You have a passion for that area. Let your passion unleash your creativity. And using that creativity, you solve that problem. And if you solve the problem, guess what? You're all billionaires. Right? You're the next Elon Musk. You're the next Steve Jobs. If there is one thing you can take away from last class, that's what it is. Those three things. Creativity, passion, use it to solve problems. That's the mantra for a startup. So today, we're going to talk about what are the traits of entrepreneurs? What are the traits of leaders? What, what if you pay attention to? Look, some of it you're born with, but what if you, what if you pay attention to building in yourself will steer you towards the direction of being a successful entrepreneur? That's the theme of today. And this is one of my favorite classes because uh, I collect quotes from famous personalities. It's a hobby of mine, now you know a little bit more about me. And, and these quotes I collect and I collect for years and years. And this week what Hannah and I have done is we've put some of these quotes into use and that will be our channel of educating you folks on these key traits. It's based on quotes from important people. It's not what I said, it's not what you said, it's what these folks said, right? So I'm really excited about this because this is, this is really a favorite part of mine. Next please, Santal. So there we are. I won't go into that. Next, please. By the way, uh, we have a hard stop today because of the program at 4, so I'm going to rush a bit. Also, I know all of you did your homework. I saw show of hands. Thank you for that. We will have a few folks come up and talk about it, not all of you, so you will forgive me. Uh, but next time I will ask who didn't present week 2, and you lift up your hand if you didn't present this week, and I'll give you a chance next week onwards, I promise you, okay? Uh, so, so who inspires you? This, this was your homework, um, and, and you have to let your creativity go loose and think about people who have changed the world in essence. Uh, we put up some names here. Uh, folks like Laurie, uh, who, who watches Shark Tank? 
It's one of my favorite shows. Yeah, you, you guys should watch it. I mean, that's why you will learn how to create a business plan in essence. Because what you present in front of these charts is basically a business plan. And that's what creating a startup is all about. Uh, Jack Dorsey, how many people heard of Jack Dorsey? How many people heard of Twitter? You can follow me on Twitter. My handle is ASETH, A-S-E-T-H. I tweet quite regularly. Oprah Winfrey? Yes? Now, because this, this runs it into your homework, I won't touch on it much and talk about each one of this. I will let you guys come and talk about it later. So we keep moving on. But these are some of the folks, in essence, who have really changed the world, who have, who have in essence, with their respective ideas being converted into startups, have created something very new. So think about it in that way. Next, please, Senpa. OK. First and foremost, and I, and I talk about this a lot. Even last week, I talked about I see leaders in each one of you. It is extremely important to be a leader. It is, it is the number one trait how people take simple things that convert into big things. It's by leadership. Leadership, in essence, has a lot of different components to it. We're going to put something up here. Uh, next slide, please. All of this, in essence, constitutes a leader. What I want to do, I will come around, is if each of you can pick one word from there, which is your favorite, in, in essence, and if you want to talk about just one sentence about it, if you don't, that's fine too. If, it, if you can talk about one of your favorite from what you read there, I will come around. Who wants to go first? Hardworking. Um, a leader should be hardworking, um, and the work should be good quality. You know, if I was personally going to pick one from all of this, I would have picked hard work. There is no substitute for hard work. Everybody. There is no shortcuts in life. There is no substitute for hard work. I'm, I'm now beginning to be in a preaching mode, which is not my style, but this is, if I preach one thing, this is it. There is no substitute for hard work. Every one of you should sign up to work really hard in life. Check with your parents. They have all, in order to get you here and, and where you are, worked extremely hard. I want you guys to always remember that. Um, they, uh, an entrepreneur should be encouraging to like their members so that uh, the people that work for them never feel down and always feel like they can do their job so that his company is success successful. Perfect, encouraging. A, a, a leader always brings everybody around them up. Not put everybody down around them, takes everybody up. And if you take everybody around you up, guess what? You also come up. Always remember, great point. Leaders should be dedicated and should um, always focus on their, what they're doing, not just to get distracted. Not getting distracted and dedicated, very nice. A leader should be open to new ideas and always have an open mind. New ideas, we talked about it last week. Great point. Um, a leader should be team oriented, so it's not only about them as a team. Absolutely, it's all about teamwork. We talked about it last week, right? It is all about teamwork. A leader should be positive, so that way um, they always think of how to improve. Positivity, extremely important. You'll find all of those folks who have become successful, who are billionaires, they always kept positivity alive. There are a lot of times in startup land, and I'm running out of, uh, I guess, range, where you, you tend to go down and you say, hey, what's going on? My, start my startup idea is not coming together. I am going down, what's going on? If you have that passion and if you have the perseverance, You'll always come through. Check. Collaborative. Uh, you cannot create like anything that you want to create without a team. So you have to uh, work with your team. Very good. Collaborative. Being friendly. Friendly. Yeah. So like if you are, if you're like a member of your team, you, if you want to, you might want to be friendly because like if you're not friendly, no one will 
with you or friendly is very important and there's one other thing that, that this little gentleman touched upon is how do you bring what you learn in sports to leadership right and we'll talk about that a little bit that's one of my other favorite topics um you should have fun because um you chose it and you have to have fun um, to enjoy the thing you made absolutely you have to have fun and guess what if you're passionate about the topic there is no other way you will have only fun okay a couple more we have to keep moving because no one wants a boring leader. Unique, you said? Unique. Unique? You have to be unique, absolutely. Shout out. Um, imagination. Imagination, I love that. I'll come to you other folks uh, one more time. Okay, wait, wait. I see two hands. Okay, shout out. Um, one word. Respect. Respect, I like it. And good leader needs discipline. Discipline and hard work. Shout out. Fair, I love that. Absolutely. If you're not fair, you're not going anywhere. Because guess what? A leader is someone everybody follows. If you're not fair, where did everybody go? They're not following anymore, right? You have to be fair. Next, please. Okay, this didn't come out too well. Um, this is reading material. Take it that way. It didn't come out here. We are posting all the presentations. Um, uh, as you guys know, it's, it was in the email chain. Uh, read about this, please, and we'll come back to it. But this is Ogilvy uh, talking about 10 leadership traits and what to look for in a leader, high standards. I think uh, that's the one that we didn't talk about. Uh, guts under pressure, uh, brilliant brains. Uh, again, take it as homework. Next, please. Okay. My favorite quote. This is where the journey of famous people and the quotes starts. I believe God gave us two ears and one mouth. What does that mean? Right? What does that mean? You have to speak. Every time you talk, you're only talking about what you already know. Right? But every time you listen, you're learning something. Always make room for listening. It's extremely important. Good leaders are very good listeners. You sit down, you open your ears, you, you listen, and, and you think about what, what was just said. That was the second one, right? Right, next to okay, Let me try this, let me try this, check. 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 Okay, next please. Okay, a few folks touched upon this, and, and this one, uh, again, is very fundamental, right? We talked about it last week, when we said, a lot of you came to me and said, can I do the project on my own? And what did I say in, 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 in response? I said, I would prefer not. And the reason is, if you look at it, every startup that is created, every startup that is created always has a founding team. There's not, one person cannot take a startup and build it out and create some value by themselves. They have to hire a team. Most startups have a founding team. Founding team, generally you call yourself co-founders. Every startup has co-founders. Check. Okay, next please, Santa. Okay, um, this hasn't come out well. Can we switch off the lights at the back, please? I love this one. Okay. Can you guys see? Yeah. First of all, it's. Uh, these are ants, and ants um, are, are trying to cross this, and there is a, there's a crevice here where, where they have to cross across. And, and you see what folks have done. I call this teamwork, right? It's all the ants getting together, creating a solution for the problem in real time, 
and creating a mechanism by which all of the ants can now cross past that crevice into the other side. Now I have a challenge for you. Apart from teamwork, I want you to describe this phenomena in one word. In one word. Okay? I call it teamwork. One word. And I will come to those folks who haven't. Uh, so put up your hand if you've already spoken today. Uh, if you haven't spoken to, today, put up your hand. I saw. Okay, apart from teamwork, what does this spell to you? Collaboration. Collaboration. Wonderful. Spot on. What else? Those folks who haven't yet spoken up. Anyone here? Come on. Hard work, absolutely. Trust. Trust, big time. All of those guys who are, all of these ants who are crossing over are trusting those ants that are putting their own arms and legs to create the bridge. They're trusting them 100% that they will cross over and not fall. Very good point. Good sportsmanship. Good sportsmanship, absolutely. Helping. Helping, absolutely. Creative. Creative. Oh, that, I'm sorry? Oh, I missed it. Sorry, said it. Cooperation. Cooperation, collaboration, we talked about it. Friendship. Friendship, absolutely. Does anybody see sacrifice? Do you see sacrifice? All of, those, all of those ants in between are, in essence, they're not crossing over, they're holding out. They might fall, but, but an army of ants is crossing over on top of them, right? So I, uh, for me, after teamwork, sacrifice spells out quite a bit. I use this at my work, again, I use these quotes quite a bit to lead my teams. I use this uh, at my work with my teams and some of the best things came out. And guess what, you guys were all spot on. Now think about what you eat said. Think about what you eat said, and think about what your neighbor said. Those are all traits of leadership. All traits of leadership. There's a fundamental learning that ants give us in leadership. We talked about this as well. You guys are on top of it. A big round of applause actually for all of you. Can, can we do that? Come on, you can do better. You are, you are on top of it. All the slides I have, by going around and talking and you guys providing your input, it's already there. The, the slides that can, I, we can rest and we can go home, you're learning. I'm so impressed by all of you. I'm so impressed. Now this one we talked about, right? It's not about advancing yourself. It's about advancing the team. Because if you lift up people around you, guess what? You also lift up. If you bring people down around you, no one lifts up. It's all about lifting the entire boat together. Now here, here's another thing um, that, that comes out quite a bit in entrepreneurship. It's this concept called risk-taking. Risk-taking is about when you have that passion and you found an area where you want to solve that, solve the problem, a lot of the work that goes in is people taking a lot of risks. And in this environment in Silicon Valley, we have venture capitalists. Venture capitalists basically fund their companies so that they can in essence, reward you for the risks that you're taking. How many people here have heard of venture capitalists? Okay, week three, week four, we will talk a lot about venture capitalists. So risk takers, let's, talk, let's look at risk takers. So this is Reid Hoffman, who uh, founded LinkedIn, who is now the executive chairman of LinkedIn. I love this quote. So this is about risk taking. An entrepreneur is someone who jumps off a cliff. Clip and build a plane on his way down. Isn't that beautiful? 
So by jumping off the cliff, you're taking a huge risk, right? You don't know where you're going. You might fall and you might be shattered to pieces. But guess what? As you're falling, you build a plane. It's beautiful. Elon Musk, uh, Tesla. There was, that was a big topic of discussion last week. Um, Elon Musk basically did his first startup called PayPal. How many of you heard of PayPal? Yes. He made 180 million out of that. Um, there are a lot of the PayPal founders are doing extremely well. Peter Thiel is one. Um, the, some of the Twitter team uh, are, are all from PayPal. And he said he put, he put all of that money, in essence, 100 plus 70 plus 10 million in three cities, in three startups. And then he had to borrow money to pay his rent, to pay for his food. But guess what? Each one of them now, all three of them, are multi-billion dollar corporations. And he himself is a multi-billion dollar. He's, he's a multi-billionaire in essence. Next, please. Other key traits. What else you should keep in mind as you look to become an entrepreneur? Skills that you may not have, that you may want to start building, and you may want to start thinking. Next, please. Conquer fear. We all, we are all fundamentally people who are afraid. We are born to be afraid. Those who rise above the rest are the, are the ones who are not afraid. Who conquer their fear. Who say, you know what? I'm afraid of something, I know I might fail, but I will take the risk, I will conquer my fear. And guess what? That's the only way for you to get across. If you don't conquer it, you'll stay where you are. If you have to be an entrepreneur, if you have to be a business owner that's successful, you have to go across the line of conquering your fears. It's on the other side of fear, as Jack Canfield said. Okay, I said I, I promised I will talk about sports and, and sports and how it has influenced me in, in leadership. So, Michael Jordan, it's, uh, Michael Jordan is in our era, but I'm sure you guys have all, how many, how many people know Michael Jordan? Come on, everybody knows Michael Jordan, yeah. So here's, here's the thing, Michael Jordan said I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. Stephen Curry has probably missed 5,000 shots in his career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and I've missed. So, the, the Bulls are down 100 to 98, four seconds to go. Jordan's given the ball to take it, to shoot, and he missed it. And the, and the Bulls lost 26 times. I have failed over and over and over and over in my life. And that is why I succeeded. And that is why I succeeded. Why does he say that? Why does he say that? Someone who hasn't answered before. Because you learn from your mistakes. Spot on. Because the only way you learn is by falling. If you're afraid of falling and if you don't fall down, you'll never learn. Anybody else want to talk about it? Why was Michael Jordan so successful? Failing is not actually you like, actually failing and thinking that you can never make it. Failing is like part of like you making, almost making through your mistakes and getting better. Making it through your mistakes and learning from it and getting better. So, um, he never gave up even though he lost a lot of time. He never gave up and now he was very um, Never give up. Great points. So for me personally, in my life, I have, uh, uh, you know, I have been a sportsman. I had to choose between going into playing professional sports or coming here and working uh, in the States. Uh, in, in, in India, I was playing NCAA level uh, cricket. Um, and, you know, for me, a lot of my leadership and the decisions I make and how I bring my teams 
through is, is based on sport leadership. It's think about what the captain of your team will do. Think about when you're in a situation in a game, how would you act? And if you start thinking about that, because I know every one of you plays sports, right? If you start thinking about it, you'll always find a solution. You'll always find in your mind, oh yeah, this is what I should do. And it's a beautiful thing. I'm telling you, it is a beautiful thing. When you correlate sports and sports leadership to business, to management, to leadership, it is really a beautiful thing. Try it sometime. And, and as you do in situations in your classroom, in, in, in your school, uh, come to me in the following weeks and tell me what decision you made that was driven by how you would react to in the field while you're playing a sport and how it helped you. Think about that as you go through these next few weeks as we are together and come to me and tell me, okay? Yeah. Um, so the first time that I went to play soccer, so the first match I played, I was like not really fast and good. So I just kept on missing when I had the chance to score. And by the time um, when time went past, I um, I just went, I just still kept on missing. And then one fine day, I got the chance, and then I scored. So like. Mistake is not something bad. It's that it's just that you you like um, like you making something to achieve your goal. Uh, like if you like fail once, it doesn't mean you have fa you lost your life. You can still keep on trying. Yep. 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 You persevere. You learn uh, your mistakes. You you go and think back. Why did you make a mistake? How can I overcome it? And and that's how you win. Thank you. Next, please. Be strong under all circumstances again. Folks have talked about it. Deep inside of you is more strength than you've ever known. You're built to be strong. You're built to overcome things. You have to channel it out. You have to bring it out. There will be times when fear will overtake you. Those people who win, Overcome their fears, we talked about it. And how do you overcome your fears? Based on the strength you have inside you. You are no different than me, you are no different than her, she's no different than you. It's, it's how you make yourself succeed. It's how you conquer your fears. It's how you channel your inner energy. It's how you take what you have already inside you and bring it out. There is strength in each one of us, so bring it out. And then never forget values. Values is what drives all of us. It's, it's those criminals who are now in jail who don't have the values. Everybody else is driven by very strong values. We learn values from our parents. We learn values from school. We learn values from day to day. Looking at what's happening around us and formulating in our mind a certain aspect about how you would have acted in that solution. And every time you act in that situation, it is based on the values that you carry. There are fundamental values that all of us possess. And those values will drive you very far in life. Those values will help you in every situation. When you are made with a choice, whether I should do the right thing or the wrong thing, all of us at that point, our values will guide us to do the right thing. And so Mahatma Gandhi said, your belief becomes your thoughts, your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your habits, your habits become your values, your values become your destiny. Your values are who you are, your values is what you take forward in life, your values is what guides you to being a good human being. Guess what? If you want to become the leaders of tomorrow, always carry your values with you. That will guide you. That will make you a great leader of our society for the future. Always remember this. Integrity. This is also correlated with values. 
show of hands, uh, folks who haven't participated, hopefully, uh, what is integrity to you? What does integrity mean to you? Anybody at the back? I'll come to you. What does integrity mean? It's like you respect someone and you're honest about what you respect. Integrity is about respecting and being honest. Anybody else? Integrity is about um, being honest and helping others even though no one may care and there's no reward for it. Helping others even, even though there may not be a reward for it. Very important. We'll talk about that in the next slide. But integrity, we talked about it. If you are values driven, as Mahatma Gandhi said, then what you possess and who you are is a person of integrity. Integrity drives honesty, respect, all of the factors we talked about. That's a mark of a good leader. The mark of a good leader is we talked about, in, in the traits, fairness. We talked about bringing others up. All of that is traits of integrity. Social good, right? We, we, we talked about it last week quite a bit, and I promised we will, we will bring it in in every week. In essence, social good is about helping others and not really caring whether you get a payment back for it or not. Always help. There is no price to helping. Okay, in conclusion, leaders are, as we have talked about in all of the trades, at the end of the day, they have their act together, right? And having that act together means they're extremely, what we call, mentally strong. So there is a summary slide, again, I will let you have the slides and study it in detail, but mentally strong, strong people, what do they do? Uh, we, we put the slide together. And this basically covers, in summary, all of the traits we've talked about this far. We talked about positivity, we talked about thinking productively, um, willing to fail, taking risks, um, they are, they're willing, they have a lot of energy, they celebrate other people's success, I love that one. They embrace change, they keep control. Again, take a look at this, and then in the following weeks, if you have any questions for me on these traits, we will bring that up into the class. But I want to go to my favorite part of the class, uh, and again, I'm hurried today because we have a hard stop at four, is going through the class exercise on what you guys have done and as homework. Next, please. Yep, that's it. Okay, so we have about 15 minutes. Uh, before we go into the class exercise, does anybody have any questions? Do you have any comments that you want to share with the class? Do you have any burning thoughts that you want to share with the class? Pleading that he leave the lion, but so the lion let him go because even though he knew that the mouse could help him, and then one day a couple hunters caught the lion in the net, and he asked the mouse to save him, and the mouse saved him because he saved him the day before. Great story, the mouse and the lion story. It talks about many of the concepts we've learned today. It talks about first of all leadership. It talks about helping others. It talks about you know, don't expect a payback, but guess what? It will come back to your full circle. Very nice story. Any other comments before we move to the exercise? Where will these slides be? We send out a link in the email. Um, did, you, did your parent get... Uh, so if you sign up for... Uh, it's in the... It's, it's buried in the email, but it's in my slide share as well. So my slideshare site is slideshare.net slash ASAC. 
So my Twitter handle is ASAP, my email is ASAP at yahoo.com. Everything for me is ASAP. So my slideshare.net is ASAP. I, I'm also posting the slides there. So you can go grab it there. OK. Class exercise. So we'll, we'll, we'll go through probably uh, 10 of you, maybe more if we have the time, in the next 15 minutes. Uh, what you would want to do is you want to come up, take the mic, and talk about who is your favorite entrepreneur, and talk about three traits on that entrepreneur. But before you do that, when you come up here, first announce who your favorite entrepreneur is. And then what I want the rest to do is, if, if that entrepreneur is who you chose as well, I want you to come up as well. And you do it as a team. Okay? So say I come up and I say, my favorite entrepreneur is Steve Jobs. So by the way, I hope no one did Steve Jobs because we banned Steve Jobs, we banned Bill Gates, and we banned Mark Zuckerberg. Not, not because they're not good entrepreneurs, but because everybody knows about them. Right? So we wanted to put a challenge in front of you all. So if I say Steve Jobs, then I want folks to say, me too, me too, me too, and come up. Right? And we do it as a team. All right, who wants to come up first? Say your name and who's your entrepreneur? Um, my name is Suhani and my favorite, my favorite entrepreneur is Marissa Meyer. Marissa Meyer, anybody? No? Okay, I'm in this team. She's <laughs> my favorite too. I used to be a Yahoo, remember? Um, my inspiration is Marissa Meyer. Marissa Meyer is the CEO of Yahoo. Marissa Meyer started off as a software engineer at Google. Then she went on to become a VP at Google too. Then she finally took up the challenge to become a CEO at Yahoo. She is a perfectionist. She can spot every little detail in anybody's work, not just hers. She designed the Google homepage, which has nothing but a simple search bar and their logo. Even 15 years later, Google's homepage is the same, which is today. She has three kids, but she manages her work-life balance. Did you know she only took a eight-day break when she recently had twins? Well, that set a bad, bad example for other moms. Thank you. <laughs> Great job. Thank you. And Marissa is uh, supposedly um, the hardest working CEO in the Valley. Um, she has, you know, I believe the Wall Street has different expectations, but if you look at where Yahoo was before to now, she has brought it up to, to a very good level. And the only, in essence, barometer to that is when she took over, the stock was worth at $9 or something, and today it's in the 30s. So even though people may disparage her and say her that she's not done well, but at the end of the day, she's created a lot of wealth for Wall Street. Okay, who wants to come next? So my name is Murray, and I did Sergey Brin. He founded Google along with Larry Page in their garage. Okay, anybody else did Sergey Brin? You did? No, no, I did that, but I said something else. Okay. No. Anybody else in uh, amongst the the students? Sergey Brand? Okay, go ahead. And then he created totally uh, uh Sergey Brand along with Larry Page created a totally new idea for a search engine and he used diversification to create a multi billion dollar company. That's great. Sergey Brin is the founder of, uh, of Google, and uh, he is now spearheading Google's New Age initiatives. Uh, if you look at Google Glass, and if you look at, uh, at the self-driving cars, I believe he's driving that too. Unintended, driving that too. Uh, he's not driving that, uh, it's self-driving. Uh, but for Sergey Brin, that's a great choice. Thank you. Okay, if someone from this side. Yeah, that's right. Let's do a round of applause for both of them. Okay, one from the side. My name is Serena, and my inspiration is Sergey Brin. 
presentation is Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. Okay, Jeff Bezos. Who else? <laughs> Jeff Bezos, come on. Does everybody know Jeff Bezos? Okay, who doesn't know Amazon? Okay, everybody knows Amazon. Right. Okay, come on up. So Jeff Bezos was born in 1964. He went to Princeton and graduated in computer science and electrical engineering. He got two bachelor degrees. He founded Amazon in 1994. He got the idea when he was driving from New York to Seattle. Initially, he set up the company in his garage. He first started selling books, then moved on to other products. He made it easy and convenient so that customers can buy products with one click. There was also a great return policy. In this way, he revolutionized internet shopping. In order to create more sales and expand the Amazon brand, he started Kindle, where people could buy and download music. Another great achievement was the introduction of Amazon Web Services, which sold cloud hosting and cloud infrastructure services to companies and people. This was a stellar hit, and Amazon now has a 30% of the cloud infrastructure market. All in all, Jeff Bezos is a great entrepreneur and leader who revolutionized internet shopping and a pioneer in cloud services. Shareholders are pleased with his performance, and the stock price has moved from $1.150 in 1997 to $567. So, uh, by Harvard, Harvard Business View, he's um, declared the greatest C living CEO currently. Um, he always had a love for science, and it's in its uh, testing stage, but Blue Origin, uh, so he's planning on having an average man go into space at a low price. Um, is it, is it in very safe. Yeah. Um, and he believes in working in small teams. That way, uh, the work is done more efficiently. Yeah. Uh, I was an advisor once to uh, to Amazon, particularly with their uh, they have a data business called Alexa. Uh, it's run out of San Francisco, so I can relate to that. Small teams, heavy teamwork. A uh, lot of diligence in all the work you do. Uh, he is extremely detail oriented. Thank you, both of you. Great job. Okay, someone from the back. My name is Lassia, and my favorite entrepreneur is Nick Woodman. Nick Woodman is a CEO. Is there anyone else who did Nick Woodman? Okay. So Nick Woodman was the CEO and founder of the GoPro camera. I chose three character traits about him. First of all, he's daring. Woodman didn't even get a good education. He earned a BA degree in visual arts and minor creative writing from the University of California. But he saw, he saw the opportunity to solve a problem that many people faced. He's creative. He got inspiration for the GoPro camera after he used a small camera attached to the palm of his hand to try to capture his surfing activities on film. This led him to create the GoPro, a compact digital camera that supports Wi-Fi, is waterproof, records onto a micro SD card, all for a really low price. He wants everyone to have access to high quality cameras like professionals, only for much less. He's also really dedicated. He will become the Shark Tank investor in the sixth season. He also invested over $125,000 for two companies. And he wants to see other companies succeed like his own. He also reached out for the public instead of venture capitalists. And that's why I chose Nick Woodman. Okay, anyone else in the back? Come on over. Um, my 
favorite entrepreneur is Reid Hoffman. Um, my name's Ajit. Okay, Reid Hoffman, anybody else? Okay, I'll do. Oh, come on up. Are you Reid Hoffman? No, okay. Um, so he was the co-creator of LinkedIn, an early investor in PayPal and Facebook, and is the CEO in the startup um, Greylock Incorporated. Um, so first, he takes intelligent risks. Example um, is when he first started, he took a low-paying job that offered learning opportunities. Um, one of his quotes is, be persistent and hang on to your vision, and at the same time be flexible. And also another, um, one of his rules is, rules can be broken. Example, and one of his quotes is, rules of, of entrepreneurship are guidelines, not laws of nature. Hoffman, we had a quote uh, from him on risk taking, remember? Okay, someone from that side at the back. Come on over. Yes. We have time for four or five more, so. Um, my favorite entrepreneur is Walt Disney. Walt Disney. What's your name? Walt Disney. What's your name? Alicia. Anybody else doing Walt Disney? Walt Disney? animated movie which was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and his famous theme park. Um, to build the first Disney theme park, he mortgaged his life insurance, stock, house, and all of his furniture. Um, so then he had enough money to buy a van near Anaheim and uh, the first Disney theme park was built. And his multi-billion dollar empire started with a rabbit named Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. He started, uh, he started off as a car boy, drew cartoon pictures for fun. He, the original first, the first original creation was Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Independent creation was Mickey, which replaced Oswald. And Oswald was like under Universal Pictures. He created Disney Animations Company. Um, we three are inspired by Walt Disney, and um, his most famous rules are I'm Jayashree, I'm Sanjit, I'm Akin. Okay, so the first rule is invest in knowledge, because knowledge is the key to success. The second one is know your goals. Having a goal will bring you closer to becoming a successful entrepreneur. And the third one is go with your feeling, follow your passion to achieve your dream. Um, I have one more favorite entrepreneur. He is Elon Musk. I like him because he took one major risk. So he launched a rocket from SpaceX, which took more than a year to make, and more than a million. And but then. Uh, but the first time he launched it, it he made it to the landing. But then he um, he he, he um, at the landing he the rocket um, did something and then it just uh, fell down and exploded. And the second time, this like, something else happened. Well, I don't know exactly. And the third time, he actually achieved it, and that's uh, that's actually great. And he has one more company. The the Tesla company, and he he, uh, he makes a lot of money out of it. And and one cool thing about the Tesla company is that all the cars cars from Tesla company are only battery and not not um, like gas use. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Walter Crowd and Elon Musk. So we have time for two more, and only two more. Uh, if I I see five hands. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to give a uh, turn to someone who hasn't spoken before. Have you spoken? Did you guys speak? Did you, you spoke last week? 
Okay. Did you speak last week? No. Okay, come on over. Sorry. I will give you guys a chance next week, okay? Come on over. You can see all the crowd outside. They're all waiting for the next event. We have to wrap up. So there'll be one more after this. My name is Natasha, and my favorite entrepreneur was Elon Musk. Anybody else with Elon Musk? Apart from you, you Ms. Spoken, thank you. Okay, keep going. Uh, as you may know, he's the uh, founder of SpaceX uh, and the co-founders of and the co-founder of Tesla Motors and PayPal. Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, or SpaceX for short, was founded in 2002 to reduce space transportation costs and enable the colonization of Mars. The Tesla Motors is a car company that sells electric cars, electric vehicle powertrain, and battery products. It is fully electrical. Um, today, uh, Elon Musk took a risk and launched a rocket into space but on a 12 by 12 foot uh, launch pad, and its goal was to return back onto that launch pad. If that's a success, then the, then the space shuttle, as we know it, will completely change. He went to Stanford University to study applied physics, but left in two days to pursue his entrepreneurial aspirations in the area of internet, renewable energy, and outer space. Elon Musk has an estimated net worth of $12.4 billion, and yet he's the 39th richest person on Earth. Okay, one more person who has not spoken in the last two weeks. Have you not? You spoke last week, okay. Anybody who has not spoken last week? Come on up. Okay, last one. And, uh, and the traits that you brought up were spot on. I'm extremely, extremely impressed by this group. So a big round of applause for all of you. <laughs> My apologies, we are going to stop abruptly because we are three minutes away and I asked uh, two minutes leave away from Seema. Thank you, Seema, for the kids' sake. Um, we, we have this next session, which is called Unity and Community. Uh, we, uh, we invite all of you to stay. Uh, we're going to do some quick prep as we transition over to it. Uh, so please feel free to stay. If not, we will see you next week. Are we meeting at 4 next week? So next week onwards, same place here, but at 4, not at 3. At 4, and we will see you next week. We will announce if there's any homework via the same email channels. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week.
I was fine.